This is the presentation for soil contact erosion, also known as scour. The presentation will provide an overview of the internal erosion process of soil contact erosion and will describe the geometric and hydraulic conditions for initiation. First, an overview of the soil contact erosion process. Soil contact erosion is the selective erosion of fine particles from the contact with a coarser layer caused by the passing of flow through the coarser layer parallel to the contact. It relates only to conditions where the flow in a coarser layer is parallel to the interface between the coarse and fine layer. Note that the International Levy Handbook also shows a transverse flow case but that is not appropriate. Contact erosion, or scour, has been used in the literature to describe erosion of core material at the core foundation contact due to seepage flows within continuous pathways in the rock foundation, such as an open joint. However, this is really a form of concentrated leak erosion. USACE added soil in front of Eichold's term of contact erosion to emphasize that this process occurs at the fine coarse soil contact, not the soil rock contact. Focusing on one pore of coarse layer just above the top of a fine layer, surface erosion of fine particles occurs by the flow which develops into the pore. The reverse orientation, where a coarse layer is just below the bottom of a fine layer, also has a gravitational pull. The domain for soil contact erosion is defined by a geometric condition in which pores of the coarse layer have to be sufficiently large to allow particles to pass through, and a hydraulic condition in which the flow velocity has to be sufficient to detach the particles and also to transport them. Continuous erosion modifies the interface geometry and gradation. Soil contact erosion may occur between any granular layer, such as a filter, a drain, riprap, and fine soil that's in contact with that layer, where high velocity flow in the coarse soil parallel to the contact erodes the fine soil. These characteristics usually correspond to the interface between the core and a gravelly foundation. In figure A, a homogeneous embankment dam is shown, with the potential for soil contact erosion occurring at a layered fill due to segregation during construction, and at the interface with a coarse foundation soil. In figure B, a zoned embankment dam is shown with the potential for soil contact erosion occurring at high reservoir levels above the core and for erosion into coarse layers in the foundation. Generally, soil contact erosion is considered a contributing mechanism. For example, it can lead to the formation of a roof or a pipe for concentrated leak erosion. Several examples of how soil contact erosion acts as a contributing mechanism are shown in the figures on the slide. In figure A, soil contact erosion causes a cavity to develop within embankment fill. When their pressure around a cavity drops, roof collapse occurs and a sinkhole develops. In figure B, a cavity created by soil contact erosion does not collapse and can be an initiator for backward erosion piping. In this particular configuration, the backward erosion piping may not ever be observed. In figure C, soil contact erosion leads to loss of stability or unraveling of the embankment section. And in figure D, the eroded fine particles can clog a permeable layer and increase pore pressures in the embankment, which may result in hydraulic fracture and uplift of the downstream toe. Several cases of leakage associated with the development of a sinkhole or subsidence have been reported in zone dikes on the River Rhone in France. The dikes are clay silt embankments with gravel layers on the upstream and downstream slopes, often on gravel foundations. Soil contact erosion occurs when high river levels cause high velocities in the gravel foundation, leading to the initiation of soil contact erosion at the clay silt fill and gravel interface. Soil contact erosion may be interrupted if the water level and Darcy velocity are not high enough to sustain continuous erosion, or if they do not remain high enough for periods long enough to sustain continuous erosion. 
The sinkholes are likely due to the migration of fine soils to replenish eroded material from intermittent soil contact erosion. None of these incidents ended in collapse and failure of the dike, and diaphragm walls were installed through the embankments into the gravel foundation to reduce flow velocities in the gravel below the critical values at the clay silt fill and gravel interface. Next, an overview of the geometric condition for initiation of soil contact erosion. The geometric condition is assessed by comparing the D15 of the filter or coarse material to the D85 of the base or fine material. If the geometric condition is not met, which requires a ratio of the D15 of the filter to the D85 of the base to be less than or equal to eight, then soil contact erosion is unlikely. If the geometric condition is met with the ratio of D15 of the filter to the D85 of the base being greater than eight, the hydraulic condition for initiation must be assessed. For comparison, the filter design criterion for the no erosion condition for base soils with fine contents greater than 85% is a ratio of D15 of the filter to D85 of the base of less than nine. Make a note that this figure from iCold Bulletin 164 is corrected to show the correct criterion for bronze displayed in a blue font. Geometric criteria or filtration have been extensively researched and are well developed for non-plastic soils. Particle retention criteria can also be used. The no erosion condition and the application of Foster and Fell criteria for filters that do not satisfy modern filter design criteria to evaluate soil contact erosion of plastic and non-plastic soils are discussed in the continuation presentation. Next, an overview of the hydraulic condition for initiation of soil contact erosion. When the ratio of D15 of the filter to D85 of the base is greater than the values in the fifth column, hydraulic loading controls, and there is no soil filtration effect. In between these two limits, geometric and hydraulic factors control erosion. This figure shows the influence of the geometric and hydraulic conditions on the critical fruit number for erosion. In the transition zone, the hydraulic loading needed to initiate erosion is higher than in the domain of pure hydraulic influence. Once the ratio of D15 of the filter to D85 of the base becomes greater than about 25 to 30, purely hydraulic conditions control the erosion. The critical fruit number for erosion ranges from 0.65 to 0.7. In this region, the critical velocity can be estimated using the bronze or Guido et al. methods, which assume the lowest value of critical fruit number of 0.65. For a particular base soil, the critical gradient in the coarse layer parallel to the contact where erosion initiates can vary by one order of magnitude, depending on the permeability of the coarse layer. However, in the same tests, the critical Darcy velocity for initiation of erosion does not significantly depend on the permeability of the coarse layer and is only related to the fine soil's resistance to erosion. Therefore, the Darcy velocity in the coarse layer has been chosen by the majority of researchers as a good indicator of hydraulic loading. Bronze in 1985 measured critical velocities for gravel above sand. Bronze law is the simplest formula to use and gives a good approximation of critical velocity for gravel above a sand. Make a note that the result of the formula must be converted from meters per second to centimeters per second for plotting and interpretation. Guido et al. in 2010 measured critical velocities for gravel above sands, silts, and sand clay mixtures. Experimental results for the critical Darcy velocity range from one to 10 centimeters per second. The minimum of one centimeter per second corresponds to a particle diameter of 0.1 millimeters. This figure was edited from the original by reversing the order of the x-axis and using centimeters per second instead of meters per second for the y-axis. Make a note that the effective grain diameter of the base soil is used in lieu of the D50 of the base soil as prescribed in Kozeny 1953. During testing, some soils exhibited similar critical velocities, but significantly different D50, 
and some soils exhibited different critical velocities despite similar D50. In light of these results, it was concluded that the D50 was not a relevant soil characteristic for predicting critical food velocity for fine grain soils. The effective grain diameter prescribed in Cozeny 1953 should be a more representative grain size description for a base soil. This is an example of how the effective grain diameter is calculated. The first three columns are the cumulative particle size curve. The fourth column obtains the fraction within each particle size increment. The fifth column obtains the average particle size for each increment using a logarithmic scale. And the sixth column obtains the ratio of the fourth and fifth columns, which is then summed. The effective grain diameter is the reciprocal of that sum. The Guido et al. equation for critical velocity for fine soil, including sands, silts, and sand clay mixtures is shown. Make note of two things on this slide. One is the critical fruit number of 0.65 that was used in the bronze method is used in this equation instead of a coefficient of 0.7 prescribed in Guido et al. The other thing to note is that for plotting and interpretation purposes, the result of this formula must be converted from meters per second to centimeters per second. Guido et al. can be used for sands as well as silts and sand clay mixtures below a gravel. Bronze is shown as a blue line on this chart for reference and should be used for simplicity for sands below gravel. Bronze is equivalent to Guido et al. within the range of applicability. Once more, note that results from the two formulas must be converted from meters per second to centimeters per second for plotting and interpretation on this chart. Experimental data with fine soil above gravel is limited. This phenomenon is complex and cannot be directly linked to river erosion. Influence of confining stress on critical velocity was noticed. Measured critical velocities were similar order of magnitude as gravel above fine soil between one and 10 centimeters per second. For silt above gravel, where erosion might be expected to be initiation when silt particles fall into the gravel, Initiation of erosion is dependent on the transport of particles, not by detachment. As seen on the previous slides, the hydraulic conditions for soil contact erosion depend on the configuration considered. The hydraulic criteria are reasonably well developed for non-plastic soils, but with significant uncertainty. The hydraulic criteria for plastic soils requires further research, which should account for the similar nature of the erosion process to the mechanics and methods for concentrated leak erosion, but should also give due consideration to the fact that the hydraulics of the flow for soil contact erosion are more complex. Next, an examination of more and less likely factors related to soil contact erosion. This table can be used to help assess the likelihood of initiation of soil contact erosion and it addresses both the geometric and hydraulic conditions for initiation. It can be used as a starting point, but the risk team must develop project-specific more likely and less likely factors to guide subjective probability estimation. The notes in the blue font indicate to consider the hydraulic condition for initiation when the ratio of the D15 of the filter to the D85 of the base is greater than eight. Next, we'll go through a very brief overview of the Soil Contact Erosion Initiation Toolbox. The toolbox provides worksheets that allows the user to work through an evaluation of soil contact erosion initiation using either the bronze or the Guido et al. methods. The bronze method generally is to estimate critical velocity in a gravel layer for sand below gravel, whereas Guido et al is used to estimate critical velocity in gravel layer for a sand, silt, or a sand clay mixture that's below gravel. This concludes this presentation on soil contact erosion.